she gets busy during the day. But she didn't get back to her people, which was very concerning. And Nicole called me when she was at the door, and that's when I came home. And then walked in the house, and nothing was vanished. Nothing was here. I mean, she wasn't. She wasn't here. The kids weren't here. Nope. Nobody was here. What's your wife's name? Shanann. S H A N A N N. What's your What's your kids? Bella and Celeste. Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. This is the third episode in the slip of the tongue analysis series and um, you may recall that the first episode had to do with what saying something about uh, she barely let me in, she barely got in, right? And the second one was just him uh, kind of trying to let slide the fact that Shanann had not that he had not mentioned Shanann's pregnancy once in the 15 minutes during the Sermon on the Porch. In this episode, we're going to look at something that I'm sure many of us have seen before, but without really noticing. How I noticed it was I was doing some research for a book that I'm writing, and I was really just looking for the instances of the word hope that, that Watts mentions while uh, while he's on the porch I'm referring specifically to the first seven minute uh, raw video and I think he, he refers to, he uses the word hope three times with the last the last uh, mention of it the most um, the strongest if I can put it that way and uh, that that might be something to to talk about in a in a separate episode the reason why I want to highlight what I'm going to highlight now, and you may not have heard anything that stood out to you in the audio, is just to show how uh, how profound truths can reside in plain sight. So in other words, you can hear something a thousand times, maybe a hundred times, and nothing's going to stand out to you. But when you know the facts of the case, back to front you know maybe two years later then you see things far more clearly that's the one thing I want to emphasize the other thing I want to emphasize and I will put a link to the video in the um, in the description I'm also going to show you um, a staggered uh, uh, a staggered version or staggered um, screen grabs of the moment that he says the thing that I'm, that I'm going to highlight and what you really want to notice there are the micro expressions right so and, I, and I've kind of placed a clue in the cover image of this uh, episode what I'm kind of angling at in terms of the micro expressions but, but aside from the one micro expression that I'm going to um, highlight the the whole sort of symphony really stands out when you play that clip you sort of hover your mouse over the the the, the sort of moment that that it starts and then you keep clicking on that same section and it'll play itself over and over again and the more times you watch it the more you can see wow something is really happening here and how did i miss it so uh so that is what we're gonna look at in this episode but before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed yet to True Crime Rocket Science, please do like, share, leave a comment and let's get started. So some of you might be thinking, well, you know, what on earth are we doing? Uh, obviously, Chris Watts committed the crime. We don't need to do any statement analysis. We don't need to check his micro expressions. He's guilty. Um, so, so what are we still doing? Um, it's if if that's your your attitude, you really don't you really shouldn't be watching this video. So what this video is really about is basically saying, okay, yes, we do know he's guilty, right? And we all watched the sermon on the porch, and we all caught a lot of signs and symptoms and clues that something wasn't right. But what about the clues that we've missed even when we knew that he was guilty? So in other words, you come back to it. And now you know that he's committed the crime. You know that he uh, is absolutely guilty. And now the question is, how good are you 
at lie detecting even knowing that and that is what we're sort of testing here and obviously it's not just that it's also being able to integrate what we know about the case with what we are seeing and being able to um, patch those through to the criminal psychology and then sort of make sense out of that in a way that is an insight okay so let's uh, let's start off by um, just highlighting what it is that he says that is the slip of the tongue okay and I'm going to play it again so so don't worry um, I'm going to I'm going to play the audio again and so what he says is something about and walked in the house and nothing nothing was here right and what's important to highlight with that is that is what he's trying to emphasize he's trying to emphasize that when everyone went into the house not just him officer coonrod nicole atkinson nicholas the detective um, all the other officers that arrived later on there was nothing there was nothing there there was no sign of foul play that's what he's actually getting at and he can't he can't wait to get that that out he can't wait to uh, express that that nothing was found nothing was here bear in mind is expressing this on tuesday right and the, the clue in how and why that is a slip of the tongue is because he later kind of corrects himself and he, he says not not that nothing was here no one was here uh, he says like nobody was here um, you know everyone had vanished and you'll pick that up when we uh, listen to the audio. Now, the thing to bear in mind is what he's actually saying isn't true. So he's saying, you know, that he arrived and nothing, nothing was here. And, you know, if you look at the um, ring doorbell footage, which is the last footage we see of Shanann when she's still alive, uh, she's got her suitcase with her. She's got her Dolce and Gabbana um, handbag with her, which has got her purse inside, right? And she's got her phone with her, and she's wearing a shirt with the word love in pink letters on a kind of a, a gray shirt, right? Now, of those three, of those four items, three were found inside the house. The suitcase underneath the stairs, the handbag was found um, in Shanann's office, and which was later moved to the kitchen counter. Her phone was found by Nicholas Atkinson, stuffed between the couch pillows on, in the loft area. And then that shirt that she's wearing was never recovered. We don't know what happened to it. So when Watt says nothing was here, that doesn't make any sense because that was the problem, was that everything was there. Shanann's car was there, the car seats were in the car, the, the children's medicine was there, uh, Shanann's suitcase was there as I mentioned, um, Shanann's wallet was there, her money was there, her phone was there, everything was there. So him saying nothing was here doesn't make any sense because that was the problem, everything was there. And he doesn't say no one was here, he says nothing was here. And that is the giveaway from the perspective of a criminal is that that is what he's trying to say is that uh you know we walked in the house and nothing nothing was here well yeah no one was here which is how he corrects himself but it's not true that nothing was here all those items were there and and the thing that he's actually trying to communicate subconsciously is that there's nothing there to give him away in other words there's nothing nothing was here that would show that something had happened. That's what he's trying to communicate and that is the slip of the tongue. Now, so that's the one part that I think is quite interesting. The other thing to emphasize, and, and I think this sort of holds hands with where he was looking and what he was doing and his body language, his micro expressions when he was talking about um, uh, barely got home, barely got in, when he said that and something I covered in the, the first video, the slip of the tongue we all missed, is when he's talking about um, uh, nobody was here when I got home, 
as th that is happening, and this is something you must go and watch yourself in the video, notice what he's saying when his eyes lift and turn to the right. And basically what's happening when he's looking there is he's looking in the direction of the staircase. So in other words, if he could see through the, the walls of the house, he would sort of be looking towards um, the stairs, right? And uh, so there, I've, I've got three separate screen grabs of that. And you can, it's not, his, although his eyes are, are looking in the same direction, you can see it's three different images in lieu of his mouth. It, the expression in his mouth changes slightly and you can see he's trying to stifle a smile. When he says nothing, he's feeling duping delight. Now, it's far more real when we actually watch it sort of in real time or close to real time. So let's do that. Okay, so that's an image of the sentencing. And there we are. Okay, so this is on uh, Picasso software. And we're just going to look at some of these images. And bear in mind, is at the time that he's, he's making these expressions, he's talking about and walked in the house and nothing, nothing was here. So there you can see him looking to the right and then he blinks and then he, he sort of makes kind of a strange grimace with his mouth. And we went through that very, very quickly. And now we're going to go through it a lot slower. So there we go. And he starts talking about nothing was here. And he looks to the right. You can clearly see he's looking in the direction of the staircase. And then he blinks almost to, to shut that off. And immediately after that, he makes this weird grimace with his, his mouth. And there we watch it in, in slower motion. And let's look at it again, slowed down and, and zoomed in, okay? We especially want to concentrate now on his mouth. We've looked at his eyes. Look there, look at his mouth. And at this point he is saying the word here. No one was here. Nothing was here. And look at that smugness in his expression. He's trying not to smile. You can see that he's thinking about what happened. He's thinking about where the evidence was and now it's no longer there. Because he's, he's just been speaking about when he came home, right? And But he's thinking about when Shanann came home. You can see there's a little tilt in his lips there where he's trying not to smile. There is more of a smile. There he is looking to the right, but look at the smile that's also there. He's remembering and he's smiling. He's still remembering and th there's still that smile. When you disconnect the mouth from the eyes, look at those eyes. And then he closes his eyes and he kind of does a kind of a, raises his eyebrows and then his expression changes. And there's something masked there. It's a smile but there's also more than that look at that look at his mouth there it seems to be something like contempt and what he's saying there with a bit of a sneer is you know nothing was here while the dogs are going through the house that, that, that is what is happening in real time 
So he's kind of got a sneering attitude to, to what they're doing. He thinks it's a big joke. So I'm going to play you the audio now of the, um, the moment that he says this. And listen carefully, not just to what he says, but how he then tries to cover it over by saying... Uh, oh, not no one, not nothing was here, nobody was here, okay. And that's when I came home and then walked in the house and nothing was vanished, nothing was here. I mean, she wasn't, she wasn't here, the kids weren't here, no, nobody was here. And then walked in the house and nothing was vanished, nothing was here. I mean, she wasn't, she wasn't here, the kids weren't here, no, nobody was here. Walked in the house and nothing has vanished. Nothing was here. Walked in the house. Nothing was here. Nothing has vanished. Nothing was here. It's vanished. Nothing was here. Nothing was here. Nothing was here. I noticed something else which is kind of like this and it's also completely in plain sight but that we don't really think about just because we've seen these pictures over and over again and the thing that I want to also talk about, but in a separate episode, is uh, what happened to Chris Watts' original defense counsel? Because in the beginning you had John Walsh and James Merson. James Merson is the guy that has got a shaved head and you actually also saw him inside the Watts home when the defense team were you know, investigating the case and, and uh, you know, he was literally inside the house, um, you know, trying to investigate the case on behalf of his client. And then remember at the sentencing, James Merson wasn't there and instead there was a woman there. And so the question is, what happened to James Merson? And so that is something we're going to be talking about in the next episode. If you're interested in that uh and you want to be alerted to that, uh, click the notifications bell, like, share, leave a comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.